Well, this is my puppy Zoe. Come here, girl. No. She's a healer, and she's nine weeks, and she is cute as a button. She's pretty calm and playful. She likes other dogs because we got her out of a pretty big litter, and now she's just by herself. Winston's always rude to her, growling and grumbling and giving her death glares, but he'll warm up eventually. Oh, Winston's so jealous. <laughs> Once you've chosen the correct length of last and the correct width, you're going to need to look at the measurements and decide what you need to do to the last to make it fit. Much of the time, if you fit the person correctly in the heel, you're going to end up needing to add to the ball measurement of the last. For this particular client, the ball of her foot measures eight and seven eighths. I know that I want her in a four and a half D because that fits in the length and in the width of the heel, which means it fits in the short heel. I'm going to measure the ball of the last, and it gives me eight and three eighths. I know that I need to add half of an inch of volume to this last in the ball area to make it fit her foot. Instead of just adding this volume anywhere, I'm going to return to the pedigraph, position the last on the pedigraph. See how I have ink visible on each side of the last? That tells me I need to make the last wider. For some people, the volume of their foot is tall, and for others, the volume of their foot is wide and flat. The pedigraph will tell you this. The pedigraph will tell you where to add to the last. For this lady, it's telling me the volume needs to go on the sides of the last rather than on top of the last. I have some suggestions here on how to add to the last. If you have a five and one and you need to add to the side of the last, you can take those skivings from your five and one and add them to the sides of your last, and that will give you extra volume. Do be careful with this method, though, because when you add a skiving to the side of the last, you're changing the contours of the last, so you want to really work on, when you sand that in, make sure you match the original shape of the last when you're through. Another way that you can add to a last is by wrapping it, and this is the method I use most of the time. You can cut a shape. In this particular instance, I've cut a shape that will give me some extra volume, not only in the ball and the waist, but also in the instep. And when you cut this particular shape, you can change where you position it. If you need a little extra in the short heel, you can position it higher up the cone, if you don't need it any in the short heel, but you do need it in the instep, you can bring it down below the short heel. So what I would do with this piece of leather, skive it along this edge right here, glue it to the last, pull it down very tightly. What I like about this method is it preserves the last contours because you're just wrapping the last and you get to keep the exact shape of the last. And then once I have it tightly glued down, I would just go underneath here and trim it off flat with the bottom of the last. Some, if you just need additional volume in the ball area, you could take a strip, skive it on both sides, and wrap the last in the ball. You can even do that on top of a piece like this. If you already have this piece on, you still need more in the ball, you can put a strip over it. If they need more room in the instep, cut a circle, skive it all the way around, 
put it there over the instep. Let's say they have a bunion. Cut a smaller circle. Skive it all the way around. Put it right there over the ball and add them a bunion. Always position your leather right side down because the strongest part of the leather is the grain side. You want to preserve that side and if you do have to sand on this and change change any dimensions of the last after you put on this piece of leather. If you need to sand on it, you want to be sanding from the flesh side, from the back, so that you're not sanding away the good leather. Today I will become a warrior. I walked in the bathroom and there's a huge cockroach on the sink. You guys don't understand how big this cockroach is. It has its own zip code. I turned around and just walked back out the door, but my horrible mother is forcing me to go in armed with only a mallet. I suggested a hammer. <coughs> she said that I would destroy the sink, and that's just an acceptable loss. Oh my god, it's there. How far back can you stand and still kill it? I hope no one's triggered by this because I am. I'm an independent woman! Ah! <laughs> Hi! Hi! Ah. I want to leave. I want to go home. Did you know there are, on average, 400 cockroaches for every one cockroach that you see in the light of day. That's disgusting. I didn't want to know that. Well, now you have to suffer too. Let's just move. Let's move. We can go somewhere else. Just so you know, my shop is right next to this really disgusting motel, and that's the reason I sometimes have cockroaches. It's not because my shop is grossly, disgustingly filthy, because it's not. Right now I'm helping my mom make a manual for her shoe kit that she sells. So it's, she has wedges and then don't you have right now a pair of heels? I have low heel heels bottoms. and I'm getting higher heels and something else. Like a low wedge too. But it comes with straps and buckles and nails for the tacking. So right now I'm making the manual but my mom wanted to show everyone yes. what I'm doing. She thinks this is a fantastic idea. Tell me what you're doing. Why, why have you taped it? Okay, so I taped the bottom of this one because but the next I'll be able to mark on the tape where I put each strap. And then whenever I take this off, I can just make a pattern for it and flip the pattern and put it on this one. And then I'll know where the straps go on this one so they'll match. It's brilliant. But stay tuned. We'll be coming out with shoe kits and manuals soon. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is on the front strap, I want to mark the center so it'll be even when I go to measure it. And my mom sells these invisible, not invisible, it's erasable ink. You put it on and you can make it erase later. So mark the center and then with a heat gun later when I'm ready, I can just use the heat gun on it and it'll disappear. Is that reverse? Yep. Right. Wow. Who knew I knew how to use one of these? 